Welcome to Pathways, a career podcast from the Idaho State University Career Center. I'm your host, Mark Beaver. Today, we're talking with Jason Batalden, Assistant Director of the Continuing Education and Workforce Training Program at Idaho State University. Jason has had a long and varied career pathway, spanning many different types of work, but one thing remained constant through it, a great perspective and attributing meaning to anything you're doing. Please, settle in and listen to our conversation. Hey, Jason, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well, Mark, and thank you for having me on today. I'm really looking forward to a conversation today. Of course, of course. Yeah. Um, you know, I, we can probably come around to a little bit of uh, what you do with, with Sweet Talk, but um, I, had, I had such a great experience um, working with you, too, that I thought, you know, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be awesome just to talk to Jason again, maybe in a different context this time. So thanks for yeah, coming yeah. on. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. I, yeah. Thank you for the reference to Sweet Talk too. our podcast. I, I kind of always love to talk about that. So um, I know, I don't know, you know, from my perspective, it's kind of fun to be in the different chair uh, instead of the host chair. So yeah. this yeah. will be a good time. Well, awesome. Well, one of the things that I really like to do on this show is kind of highlight people from some some different areas of the university. You know, I think from an outside perspective, when people think of the university, they have, you know, a few kind of um, standard uh, positions in mind. You know, you got professors, dean of students, things like that. And then there's all these other pieces that I found since working here. And I find it so intriguing, all the, all the things that make a university work and make it so special and dynamic. And you work with a department, Continuing Education and Workforce Training, or CEWT, right? Um, right. And uh, this, this is kind of one of these these kind of special, I think, um, or just maybe not non-typical kind of program. So could you tell us a little bit about what that is and and uh, kind of like a bird's eye view of, of what you do in that in that position? Yeah, yeah uh, continuing education workforce training. Um, and we pronounce it sweet, by the way. Yeah, sweet. Even talk. though if you, you spell it phonetically, it comes out cute, but <laughs> nobody wants to say cute, you know, so. <laughs> You know, at Continuing Education Workforce Training, we do hold a really unique place at Idaho State University, and more specifically, even under the College of Technology. So, we're we're even uh, a you know uh, a smaller part um, of the College of Technology. And to sum it up in the easiest way to say it, is that our division is responsible for the non not for credit courses that occur in the College of Technology at Idaho State University. So those would be um, a lot of your workforce training and types of courses, CNAs and, um, Mm -hmm. you know, CPR certifications, phlebotomies, uh, those types of things. And we also are trades with the uh, plumbing, electrician, HVAC, those types of things. And then on the other side of that too is, that community education piece, so, you know, we handle everything from uh, let's making awesome cinnamon rolls, by the way, um, to some more, you know, specific types of trainings and, you know, marketing and those types of things. And, and then as well, as well as like customized training for businesses and those types of things. So basically, if it's if it's a training or a, a class or a program that is not associated with a college credit or to a specific college degree, then um, that that typically falls in our lap to administer those types of programs and, and trainings. And just anyone can take these, right? Like a community member here in, in Pocatello, sure. Idaho Falls, anyone mm-hmm. can sign up, show up to the course. Well, sure. And there are some prerequisites, obviously, like for our EMT programs mm-hmm. yeah. and our um, CPR or um, CNA programs and those types of things, but it is open to the community. So what's well, part of our mission is that we really, really look at our job as sort of connecting Idaho State uh, University to directly to the community of Southeastern Idaho. If you don't have a student or if you're not a student at ISU, uh, you might be familiar where the campus is, you might not have a whole lot of other affiliation, the way we look at it is, you know, we we kind of help the community ISU get in touch with the people who live 
live in our neighborhood or whose neighborhood we live in, I guess should be the way we yeah. say it. So, yeah. yeah. I think it's so important. I mean, that's having that connection between a university and community is, is so beneficial to both ways, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, to get that right. for the university to have that, that support from the community and that, that kind of ongoing recognition um, and, and pride of this institution, their community is so important and helpful for the university. But likewise, I mean, a university can add so much benefit and culture and education to a, to a community. And yep. I, I mean, I really just think that CWT or sweet, I'll just call it sweet. I like that. Yeah. Better. Sweet works yeah. for us. Yeah. Um, I think it's one of the programs that does that the best, just from, from what I can tell. I mean, I get the, the catalog, um, of the sweet programs. And I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any prerequisites for fly fishing. Um, no, no, but, I mean, no. May, may, maybe for fly fishing too, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> right. Or you just want to take it, you know, and right. that, and those are amazing. I mean, they're like, you know, there's, mm-hmm. on the, I mean, you have everything from helping people get these certifications. They're going to help them kind of further themselves in their professional mm-hmm. career to things like, fly fishing and, yeah. and, and cooking yeah. classes. And I saw one for like how to, how to navigate healthcare or like open. Yeah. Or right. Somewhere. We, we, right. Right. Um, we do that through, uh, Oh, I just forgot our partner's name. Idaho, Idaho, um, health, Idaho, Idaho health or health, Idaho.org. Um, and we're able to hold zoom classes so people can figure out how to navigate that system and how to enroll. And, and so, you know, speaking about that really, in in the kind of that, that that's the beautiful thing about just working uh, that's that sweet has that makes us really unique and um is that we're entirely adaptable and we're entirely uh, and we respond quickly um mm-hmm. so you know somebody if we get a phone call that says you know i need a training um and i'm just going to use an example so forgive me for the the rudimentary of the example but you know we need to train our staff or we need to hold a class for underwater basket weaving because yeah. okay. we're finding a tremendous market for baskets that were weaved underwater. Right. Um, we can, you, you know, you, you give us enough opportunity and time to help us connect with the right people and we can have an underwater basket weaving course set up for you in no time. And, and so that's what makes it really cool, right? Is that, and that's what helps us really stay in touch with the community because we can address real specific community needs, and um, and and believe it or not, there are people in our community who consider fly fly fishing, cinnamon rolls, you know, as, as not a need, but as you know, something that really enriches their life. And and I think that and ultimately, isn't that really what education is? That somehow makes our life better. Um, we you know we we hope, of course, that education. Uh, makes our pocketbook a little thicker, right. <laughs> right? right? But that's not all that education does, right? It enriches our life uh, by teaching us new things. And so that's the one thing I love about our department is that ability just to to totally adapt to the needs of the community around us. And, yeah. and, and, and by the way, that makes us really, I, you know, I know ISU and, and the College of Technology both really appreciate the way we, work we do because that really does, it helps us. It helps us stay in touch with, with our neighbors. Right. You know, and, and that makes it really cool. Yeah. I mean, I think I talk, we talk about that in career services all the time, the kind of the ideas of, of balance in life, you know, and, and mm-hmm. kind of the value added of finding something like fly fishing or baking or something that like mm-hmm. maybe, maybe you never really considered was right for you or never thought you had the time or the money or whatever. Um, and, but you know these things can become more than i mean to call them a hobby is the simple term but mm-hmm. um really they add occupation to your life you know they give you something to do they give you that balance in in your life with your work and um everything else that you can get out of those activities you know like feeding a family or getting exercise something like all these other values that, that benefit you through that um well you know I'm sorry to cut you off, but you just, you I, and I'm sorry, Mark, but you just struck on something that really honed on, on me too, especially in the last couple of years with the pandemic. Haven't, mm-hmm. I think as a whole, our society has really found at that to be true, right? Yeah. That there needs to be other enrichment, uh, other ways that we enrich our lives. 
And, you know, even with the gig economy that we got going on to a certain degree too, right? right. Um, you know, un- underwater basket weaving could, could be a way to, to help put away a little vacation money, you know, if you right. can figure out how to do it right. So, but your point was well taken. Absolutely. That, you know, it is about enriching our lives, uh, even if it's not necessary. And, and I think the pandemic and what we've all been through um, has shown, has kind of communicated that clearly to to as us as a society that that there needs to be other pieces and components that make our life um you know Proceeding. sweet to the mouth yeah sweet to the taste <laughs> there we go yeah getting that plug yeah. in Perfect. yeah nice job on that right <laughs> no for certain I, I i completely agree i think that you know this time has really highlighted this for a lot of us and mm-hmm. so i guess just for yourself talk about these ideas with with our professions that we're in what does your job now give you so that you can have that kind of balance in your life? Like, what, what do you like about your job in, outside of your job? What does your job do for your life outside, outside of your job? Outside of my job. You know, I the number one thing for me just in general um, and, and thinking about the work and I, you know, I've, I've had a lengthy working career, right? I, I'm not a young pup. I wasn't. So I've, I've worked in many different positions and all those type and, and jobs and places. And, um, you know, and currently now where I'm at too. Um, and I would say that the, the one thing that's always been important for me um, about my job is that it brings a sense of value. Your work consumes a lot of your time. I think, you know, it'd be nice to have a job that just consumed 40 hours a week. But I think if we're all honest, when you put in, you know, thinking time and prepping for and, you know, problem solving, you know, that 40 hours a week extends a little bit just in yeah. how much thought and energy we put into our work, especially when we find our work uh, meaning, meaningful and valuable. And so I think for me, the most important thing that that my job does is is provide that meaning, um, kind of that purpose. You know, I, I, my family, you know, uh, my faith, my, my hobbies, those all are extreme, you know, all of those things, but to be able to work at a job where you feel like it matters, like what you do every day matters, um, is, is something that is extremely important to me. You know, um, when I started out working years ago, and I'm talking years and years and years ago, mm-hmm. uh, I found myself in a, in a spot where. I was kind of, I had a college degree and, you know, this was back in the early nineties and as marketable as you want to believe your college degree was, it was a little bit hard to, to find work in what I want, had my degree in. So, you know, your, your, um, you know, your need for groceries and a roof over your head kind of prioritize where you take a job. And I found a job, um, framing, um, homes yeah. in, in Oregon. And, you know, I didn't go to school to do that. I, mm-hmm. I knew how to do it because I had to, I actually had to work my way through school. So that was kind of my job to kind of, uh, help me get through school. And, and there I found myself doing it full time again, right after I graduated. And I'll never forget that, that there were times sometimes I'd be out in the town where I lived and all of a sudden I drive by a neighborhood where I had finished building a house. And you would see the house in the neighborhood and you'd see cars parked in the driveway and a green lawn. And I just, even then that gave me value, right? That, you know, whatever my contribution was to that project allowed this family to have a place that they could, you know, do what they wanted to do and and live where they wanted to live. And, and so even then having a job that, that has meaning value, or at least I can attribute a meaning or value to it. Um, is probably the most important thing. And so I don't know, I don't know how to specify that any more specific than that. You know, with, with my job now, you know, I do, I find the fact that giving opportunity to people to, to make a difference and whether it is through, uh, you know, emergency medicine technician, or whether it's through a trade, um, or whether it's through any of the other programs, there's a rewarding sense that without the work that I've done today, uh, an individual might not have had this opportunity to, to get, give themselves, to help them achieve what they wanted to do. So I guess, I guess meaning is what you place on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah. maybe that's a philosophical yeah. answer more than anything else, but you know, we, we attribute our own meaning to things and, and that's how I look at it. 
Yeah. If you're just joining us, I'm speaking with Jason Batalden, Assistant Director of the Continuing Education and Workforce Training, or SWEET, program at Idaho State University. I think you just said something like, you know, you, you can attribute the meaning to things, to lots of things, right? Um, I also had, I also framed houses. Um, oh, in, in, yeah. yeah, in my college days. <laughs> and, uh, and, painted, oh, yeah. and painted houses, which mm. painting a house can seem even, um, it can seem menial at times until you have that same experience that you're just talking to when mm. you drive through a neighborhood and you see one of your houses and you're like, wow, that house, like you get done and you've made a house look completely different. Like, it's, right. right. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. But I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, everyone, you know, I, everyone knows what a coat of paint can do, but it's, it is kind <laughs> of, it is kind of amazing to, to kind of see and right. sit back and, you know, you, you feel like, oh, I did this family. I did a good thing for this family. They paid right. me, but you know, it's, I, I do, to be honest, I do kind of miss that day. My in, When I was framing one of my jobs, I was the, it was me and another guy, and um, we, our specific task was to go onto a, the lumber, had, the bunks of lumber had just been dropped on the job site, the foundation had been poured, and our first, and our job was in one day to throw up the garage and the outside walls. Mm -hmm. And I always remember that, you know, we'd show up at 6.30 in the morning to a flat space, and by the time we went home, that night there was the skeleton of a house and what a rewarding thing to do to see that I, you know, I started from nothing and I produced something. Um, and not all the jobs I've had in my life as I has provided me that same kind of satisfaction sure. <laughs> where at the end of the day, you can go home and say, Hey, look what I did. I can actually point to something. And there are many times I've gone home and throw, I think I did something today. Right. I'm just not sure what. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've I've had mm -hmm. the same kind of experiences. So you, I, it seems to me that you've uh, developed a like a really great perspective on work, kind of regardless of maybe what it is. So I guess we're going to go back a little bit now, Jason, mm -hmm. if you will, take yeah. a little trip down memory lane with me, right but, and we'll come back around to that to that idea. But when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, that was. <sighs> Boy, I thought about I, I have thought about that a lot. So the only thing I can really honestly tell you is when I left for college uh, mm -hmm. for my freshman year, my ambition was to become a physical therapist. Okay, um, and and it was simply because I knew a, a gentleman who was a physical therapist. I admired that guy. Thought he had a pretty cool life. You know, a pretty cool wife. Uh, pretty cool kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. It seemed like this was kind of the thing. And so, um, but when I got to college, you know, things like math and science sort of really mm. kind of, uh, you know, took their toll on me. Sure. Um, and then when I tell people what my degree was, it, a lot of people, it, it's kind of weird to think you can get a degree, but I actually changed my major several times and, and got my major in, in theology. Mm. Um, in the, and so, um, but that was back in, you know, I, it was late 80s, early 90s, and there was this real push, you know, and, and this, the message at schools, at high schools were just go get a degree and a degree is all people want, a college degree, and you'll make tons of money. So, you know, you graduate the theology degree and then you realize, oh, man, if I want to eat groceries, you know, buy groceries and have a house, I got to go back to framing. <laughs> 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 but, but with that being said, um, <laughs> You know that degree is ha, has uh, has allowed open doors for say, for better or for worse, in uh, about all that advice I got in high school, and and that was what that allowed me to do is to realize that the most important thing for me was to work at jobs that got involved in people's lives directly, mm. um, and if, so if that makes sense, I what I wanted to do as a kid uh, was you know probably be a physical therapist um, just because it seemed cool. But then as I matured and grew, I realized I gravitated toward jobs that that involved me with with human beings on a lot of different levels. So right. I applied that degree and we actually went through a continued education uh, workforce training course years ago and uh, became a certified alcohol and drug counselor mm -hmm. um, and then kind of turned that into a career working with you know individuals that about a Oh, I guess it was about a 12, 15, something like that year career. And then translated that into working, you know, on the more in the administrative side, um, you know, from nonprofits to, um, you know, where I'm at now, where, 
kind of facilitating the programs, not necessarily doing the hands-on. So yeah. I don't, I don't know if that answered your question. Maybe I jumped too far. No, it did. I no, mean, no, I, I just, but, I mean, any, any, but it, any but it was answer. just weird. It was just a weird thing. You know, I, to be honest, if I, I guess to be flat out honest, I went to college because I was supposed to. Yes. And didn't have a really a plan for it. Right. Right. When I graduated school, high school in the late eighties, you know, my mom was the only person in her family and in my dad's family that, that graduated college. Um, mm -hmm. My mom was a music teacher. My dad was a bricklayer. And so the, it, there was just this expectation that when you graduate, you don't go to, you go to high you go to college. And, uh, you know, I carried, I carried it hard with my dad. I worked summer after summer with my dad and all the different jobs. And I always say that the reason he had me do that was so I knew that I wanted a job that was inside, not outside. <laughs> and I appreciated that, you know, I worked really hard, built up calluses and got sunburns and, and uh, worked at a really hard job. And that was it. That was sort of, for me, it was like, I don't hate this work, but you know, my dad kept reminding me, you know, yeah. <clears throat> you know, he's like, look, you know, if you work hard, that's great. But you know, you, your body gets used up in a big hurry. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, and so that, that's, that, that was my lessons for my parents, right? Yeah. Just go to college. And, and so I did. And, and um, a theology degree sounded challenging, uh, studying about theology, the study of God and the, what that looks like and religion looks like and how that played out in history and in life. And, and it was just a great way to go, but boy, it sure didn't uh, feed the bulldog in the end. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I think, yeah. I think that, I mean, your, your answer is, is perfect. Cause I mean, there, there's so like, you know, that, that, that question is a big question. It's a little bit, mm -hmm. um, you know, really, I just want to hear how there's a million ways to go through life. And I just yeah. love, I just love hearing all the different ways we do it. And I also think it's important for so many of our, our listeners to, to hear that a lot of people out there just didn't really have a clue career counseling and, and looking at jobs is these ideas that like you were saying, the physical therapist job, when you're young, your worldview of what jobs there are is 100% influenced by what you see around you. Yeah, and right. also the people in that job, like if you would have known a physical therapist who didn't have such a great story, you know, maybe, maybe he wasn't a good person and right, had a right. kind of a messy family situation. <laughs> maybe you would have sure. been like, well, I do not want to go down that route, you know, yeah. but you know, we right. get, we get these things, whether we're aware of them or not, you know, so often they're subconsciously fed into us and depending where you come from, we all come from a bubble, you know, whether you come from a city or a small town, you still have, you still have the bubble of your family and your neighborhood and your school. And when it's not, and that's one of the beauties of college. Like you said, you, you went there with, with one thing in mind mm -hmm. and then just kind of kept going, evolving, changed your major several times. Mm -hmm. Um, I did the same thing. I mean, I, I had the, almost the exact same situation. Parents were just like, yep, college is next. I, and I didn't mm -hmm. even question it. I wasn't like, well, yeah. should I take a gap year and figure out what's important to me? <laughs> because that wasn't, that was, I, no. I, I just wasn't even thinking that way. So I went mm -hmm. and, and I did the same thing and I changed my major many times and you were getting at this a little bit, but I, I kind of like to hear about it a little bit more is, uh, what do you think like specifically from your time doing a theology degree? Like what, what kind of skills both, both kind of like actual, like hard skills that you could, you could use on a, in, in any job and mm -hmm. kind of like transferable skills or just like kind of things that highlighted mm -hmm. for you or, or interests of yours. What, what did you get out of just doing that degree besides learning about religion throughout the ages? Well, I, you know, that degree in itself, and it's so specific and so narrow, even though it's so large, right? So I think the what what that did for me, besides allow me to put a bachelor's degree on all my resume, was number one, what it did was it, it made me a, a good public speaker. Mm. It gave me the ability to present an idea in a, in a way that made sense, um, you know, because theology, you can learn about it, but unless you can speak about it, unless you can talk about it, unless you can teach about it, unless you can present, then, you know, that was the other side of that degree, right? Um, it just, you know, it, from an academic standpoint, from a faith uh, standpoint, whatever, 
Um, and so I think that the hard, the, the real tangible hard skill that that gave me was the ability to write and speak, mm -hmm. um, the ability to take thoughts, put them down in a way that made sense and, you know, was somewhat entertaining and then, um, and be able to present those thoughts in that way. So I, I am forever grateful for that skill. And, you know, to be honest, when I got my degree, um, we actually had to take, you know, a couple semesters on public speaking and presenting. And the, I mean, it was, and it was, they were the hardest ones. They weren't um, yeah. level, you know, they weren't freshman courses. Mm -hmm. They were, they were high level courses where we were, you know, graded pretty severe, um, significantly and how well we, we did. Um, the soft skills part of that also allowed me to appreciate uh, different points of view. Mm. Um, it made me, gave me the ability to, I think, to work with a lot of different people um, because, you know, I, I'm sure there are some jobs and I, I don't know of them um, because they don't sound at all at all pleasant, but I'm sure there are jobs where you, uh, an individual goes to work and only, you know, interacts with people only in, doesn't interact with anyone, right? Mm -hmm. Performs their task and labor and submits and then goes home on a day. And, you know, um, but in, in the soft skills that, that I say that job taught me was just to number one, try to get to appreciate everyone's perspective. Yeah. After uh, one of the, I had opportunity again years ago when I was a much younger man and out of college and actually had just left the framing business and, and found a job in a, in a professional office. And um, one of the, the the individuals that I was a uh, got really close to was an immigrant from Lebanon, mm -hmm. um, and this was this was early '90s. You know, Lebanon still was coming out of its violence and out of its its struggles that it had, and immediately found a connection with him, believing in, in all things about religion because we could spend our lunch breaks having wonderful discourses, not arguments. Yeah. I mean, I mean, legitimate conversations about religion mm -hmm. um, as he was, you know, he, he obviously was a, well, not obviously, I guess, but he was a Muslim and I was from a different faith background. And so just being a, and, and he appreciated. So, I mean, that was what I'm, I, I guess that was, maybe I should have, that story was a little unnecessary. So you can cut that out. But <laughs> my point is, I think from a soft skill point of view, what that degree gave me, gave me was the ability to look at people from their perspective and understand uh, what motive help appreciate what motivates them. Yeah. And then, um, you know, and then that was another a ta a skill that was even refined when I got my counseling degree uh, or certification and then went into that field yeah. um, because you truly do have to understand where someone comes from. Um, to help them and assist them in making the changes they want. So I, I would say, but that degree is specifically probably opened the doors. And then through my other experiences in life, I was hopefully able to refine those and to make them better and yeah. get better at it. Well, Jason, so. as we kind of wrap up here, um, do you have any advice for, for career seekers out there, be they just starting college or mid career thinking about a change? You know, I, I was thinking about this. And so I'm probably going to give the worst advice. <laughs> I, I, it, and, Take but, a sweet course. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Look us up in our catalog. And and dude, no, 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 no. Uh, here's the advice that I would say. And I, I think, and, and for what it's worth, I give this to my own children. But I think sometimes we get hung up on the what I would want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and we get confused and we, we narrow our options and we uh, limit what we think we can do and can't do based on this weird sets of like, would I, you know, do, is this something I would like or want? Um, and I kind of just tell people, go about it the other way. Um, we know what we don't want, right? Mm -hmm. um, we may not know what we want, but we definitely know what we don't want. And so if you have an opportunity and it's, not on your don't want it list, mm -hmm. then go for it. Take yeah. it, take advantage of it. It, it will, it will, um, go for, you know, just do it. Yeah. Even if it's like, I'm not real sure, or even, Oh, I don't know. But, um, I say if, if the chance comes, then jump at that chance, take that chance, um, and do it with a real positive attitude with the expectation that you're continuing to learn. And so that's kind of how I go through life. Even to this day, I know what I don't want. 
Um, and so that's what I, I kind of base my decision making on. I don't know what I want, but I know what I don't. So we're, we're just not going to do what I don't want to do. And I don't mean that in the stubborn, right. like mm -hmm. I'm not going to mow the lawn today kind of stuff. I'm mm -hmm. talking about, you know, that real, that real, the stuff we really know uh, that, you know, I really knew I was not a math and science guy. And so, you know, it was once that became evident to me, I knew right away, I'm not going down anything that involves math and science. And, and I, God bless those individuals that can do math and science because they are gifted and talented and I'm not. So. Thank you. That was, that yeah. was fantastic. Thanks for talking to me today, Jason. No, no problem. Thank you. It was, a, it was a joy. Thank you so much. All right. We'll see you later. And that was my conversation with Jason. Like I said, the ability he has to keep perspective no matter what job he's doing is so important. Find the positive things in your job. Find the things you do like and why they're important to you. And fill the rest of your life with meaning through, through hobbies and occupations that, that give you joy. That's the one-two career punch to really give you a great life balance. If you're more interested in your career pathway, please feel free to visit the ISU Career Center website at isu.edu slash career. You can also check out all of our other Pathways episodes at kisu.org slash pathways or on Spotify or YouTube at the Idaho State University Career Center page. We also air on KISU the second Wednesday of every month at 7.30 p.m. From the Idaho State University Career Center, this is Mark Beaver wishing you a fantastic rest of your day.